the gray wolf. The name alone sends a chill down the food chain. This isn't just a predator, it's an ecosystem architect. Where wolves roam, forests grow. Deer stay alert, rivers even change course. A single pack can control hundreds of square miles, led by the so-called alpha. Though, in truth, it's more like a family business. They hunt in silence, communicate through glances and growls. And when the chase begins, you can forget outrunning them. Top speed, 60 kilometers per hour, and enough endurance to track prey for days. But here's the irony. Humans nearly erased them, trapped, poisoned, hunted for centuries, all because we feared our own reflection in the wild. And yet, they returned. From Yellowstone to the Carpathians, the Grey Wolf reclaimed its throne. The king never died. He just waited for the world to remember who ruled first. But while the wolf reclaimed the wild, another canine learned to thrive right beside us, the coyote. While the wolf reclaimed the wild, its sly cousin chose a different path. Ours. Half survivor, half comedian, and completely unstoppable. Once a hunter of open plains, now it thrives in alleys, deserts, and downtown streets. Where humans built fences, the coyote built shortcuts. It learned to dodge cars, open bins, and raise pups beneath the neon glow of city lights. Most predators vanished when we spread across the continent, but this one evolved alongside us, watching, adapting, improvising. In ancient legends, it was the trickster, outsmarting gods and stealing fire. Turns out, that was just a documentary in disguise. Because wherever humans go, the coyote gets there first. And beyond the deserts, another survivor waits, the Golden Jackal. The Golden Jackal. Across the dry plains of Africa and Asia, a golden shadow moves between the heat waves. Lean, clever, and always hungry. It's not the strongest or the fastest, but it never needs to be, because it's everywhere opportunity is. Carrion, fruit, rodents, garbage, nothing is off the menu. And unlike the wolf's disciplined pack, jackals live in flexible pairs and small clans, a family built on strategy, not size. Ancient myths cast them as soul guides, messengers between the living and the dead. Today, they guide themselves straight to our leftovers. Patient, quiet, calculating, the jackal is nature's perfect opportunist. But farther south, teamwork becomes an art form. Meet the painted hunters of Africa, the African wild dog, also called the painted wolf. In the sun-baked savannas of Africa, color flashes between the grass. Each one marked like a fingerprint, no two coats the same. They move as one, a living storm of muscle, teeth, and coordination. While lions rely on power, these hunters rely on precision. They chase their prey for miles, cutting, cornering, collapsing the distance. Their success rate? Over 80%, the highest of any land predator on Earth. They care for their injured, feed their young first, and mourn their dead. Beauty, brutality, and loyalty, all painted in motion. But across Asia, another red hunter whistles through the forests. The Dole. Deep in the jungles of India and Southeast Asia, a red shadow moves between the trees. Small, fearless, and strangely polite. It doesn't bark, it whistles a series of chirps and calls that sound more like birds than wolves. But don't be fooled, this sound means danger. Doles hunt in tight formations, coordinated like a tactical squad. They take down prey 10 times their size. Even tigers avoid a pack in motion. They share food, care for pups that aren't their own, and defend their family with wild precision. The jungle may hide many predators, but only one whistles before the kill. And beyond those forests, a taller, lonelier figure walks the grasslands. The maned wolf, tall as a deer, yet shaped like a fox. On the misty grasslands of South America, a strange figure moves through the dawn. Its legs, impossibly long, built not for speed, but for seeing above the tall grass. 
Unlike its carnivorous cousins, this wolf has a softer side. It hunts small prey, but also eats fruit, especially one called the wolf apple. Its voice? A deep roar bark that echoes across the savanna, half ghost, half thunder. Locals once thought it was a creature of myth. They weren't wrong. Everything about it feels enchanted, elegant, shy, solitary. The loner poet of the canine world. But deep in the Amazon, the story changes. A smaller, fiercer hunter lurks beneath the trees. The Bush Dog. Hidden deep in the Amazon, a rust-colored blur darts through the undergrowth. Small, stocky, relentless. Barely 30 centimeters tall, yet perfectly built for teamwork. They hunt in packs, swimming through flooded forests like furry torpedoes. Fish, rodents, even agoutis. Nothing escapes long. Their legs are short, but their stamina is brutal. One distracts, one chases, one bites. And suddenly, the jungle goes quiet. They don't bark, they chirp like angry otters. And if they were any bigger, the rainforest would be empty. The bush dog proves one thing. Size means nothing when hunger works as a team. And far across the ocean, another oddball hides in the snow. The raccoon dog. In the snowy forests of East Asia, a strange creature waddles between shadows. Not a raccoon, not really a dog either, just something in between. It looks cute enough to hug, but it's a master of disguise. When danger comes, it freezes and plays dead so well that even hunters get fooled. Unlike most canines, it hibernates through winter, curls up like a ball of fur, and waits for the world to thaw. In Japanese folklore, it became the Tanuki, a mischievous shapeshifter who tricks humans for fun. And honestly, it still does. Because while wolves rule and coyotes adapt, the raccoon dog just outweirds them all. From hunters, to tricksters, to ghosts of the grasslands, the wild canines of Earth never stop evolving. The Emperor Penguin, the ruler of Antarctica, wearing a tuxedo and a death wish. They endure blizzards, starvation, and months of darkness. Temperatures drop to minus 60. Winds cut like razors, and yet, they stay, standing together in perfect circles of survival. If you watched all the way to the end, don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, hit the bell, and tell me which wild canine was your favorite.